what it takes for God to do wonders through you. Now, those of you watching us on television, as we have always said, out of the broken pieces of your past, can we bow our heads in prayer? Our Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the name of Jesus. We thank you for the glory of Jesus. We thank you for the power of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that Jesus' presence will be upon this word. There are many that are going to listen to this word on television, in their radio, in their cars, in their homes, on YouTube. Lord, wherever they will listen to this message, at any time zone, in any situation in their life, they will feel the impact of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, let your glory come over this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joshua, let me start from verse 1. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua is a very easy one to look at. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites south out from Chittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before but keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark do not go near it joshua told the people consecrate yourself for tomorrow the lord will do amazing things among you then in verse 6 joshua said to the priest take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people so they took it up and went ahead of them and the lord said to joshua today i will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all israel so that they may know that i am with you as I was with Moses, tell the priest who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan water, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the word of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you. And he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gigasites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Sanctify yourself, for the Lord will do amazing things. One scripture put it this way, it says, Sanctify yourself, for the Lord will do wonders. Sanctify yourself, for the Lord will do wonders. Another one says, sanctify yourself, for the Lord will do marvelous things. As you look through this scripture, you find out that God has given one fundamental principle. If you want God to do wonders through you, if you want God to do great things through you, as you go through life, the first thing you need to do is to sanctify yourself. Now, simply put, sanctifying yourself means you set yourself apart for the things that God has put you, your hands upon. You, you just cut off every other thing and focus on the things that you want God to do through you. Jesus said, anyone that puts his hands on the plow and look at back, he is not worthy to be my disciple. And if God wants to do wonderful things, a great thing among your life, this year or any year in your life, you must ask yourself, what must I sanctify myself from? 
I can tell you from my own observation over the years, between prayers that are answered and prayers that are not answered, between the average and the excellent person, between those who become great and those who are merely good, the difference between them is the ability to sanctify themselves for what God has called them to do. Somebody said that average is the worst of the, be uh, the, the worst of the best and the best of the worst. Being average is the worst of the best and the best of the worst. And if you are going to move from the worst and you are going to move into the best, you must determine to sanctify yourself. If you are going to have a great marriage, a wonderful marriage, a beautiful marriage with your spouse and your children, you must ask yourself, what must I sanctify myself from that will not allow me to see wonders in my marriage? If you are going to be a great student with accomplishing great works, and excelling above every other of all your colleagues and beyond breaking records, you are going to determine what must I sanctify myself from that will not allow God to do great things for my life. If you are going to be a great minister of God's word in such a way that people are blessed and your anointing is flowing in your life and the glory of God is seen in your life, you must stand and ask yourself as a minister of God, what are the things that I must sanctify myself from? Paul told Timothy, he listed a lot of things. Some of the things he told them, you must flee from. Other things he told them, you must follow. And then he says, if a man sanctify himself from these things, he shall be a vessel of God, prepared to good works, meet for the master's use. Simply put, God has an, a standard that does not change with time. God has a standard that does not change with culture. And if you are going to have God move in your life as a minister of God, you must determine what you must sanctify yourself from. One of the Old Testament preachers said, I said, Ye that bear the vessel of the Lord, you must be clean. Now the word cleanness means ability to say i want to sanctify myself from now put it in the modern parlance or put it in the modern language when we say you want to sanctify yourself you are going to say what are the things i must stop doing what are the things i must stop doing what am i stop to do list if you find out that you have been praying and you have been asking god to do great things in your midst you have been asking God to do wonderful things around you and you are not getting the answer to those things. Ask yourself a very simple question. What must I sanctify myself from?